I want 60 grand for my van, and you're saying, mm, well, it's, it's not. a 30 grand van at best. Oh, no, that's not a regret. You can't regret that. Look at that. You can't regret that. What are you trying to say about my cool It's box? so cheesy. Do you think the last of the production line 6.1s are going to hold the value? Hello, and welcome to this new series of videos I've got. Fire pit, camper van conversations. So this is going to be a weekly show where I'm going to be bringing various different guests each week, talking about camper vans, products, there's going to be a topic of the week and also I'm going to be asking you, the guests, to bring on your favourite gadget, the gadget which you couldn't possibly live without. This week I'm really excited to bring you Dean from Titan Transporters. We haven't seen Dean for a while, you might remember him from the early stages of the videos, but bringing along Dean to talk about the camper van market, what's actually happening at the moment. Now, you might see the weather isn't actually very good today. So as far as fire pit camper van conversations is concerned, it's not really good because it's raining. So there isn't actually a fire pit, but I do have some drinks. So Dean, do help yourself to some drinks here. We've got some alcoholic, we've got non-alcoholic. Could really do with a cooler, but unfortunately the budget doesn't stretch to the uh, Yeti cooler at the moment. So I've got this little beauty from uh, Tesco, but it's got some ice What time's in too early? What time's too early for this? Uh, it probably is a little bit too early. <laughs> rattler. We've, we've got some ice. <laughs> rattler in there. Rattler, he's the proper Rattler as well. Time is the, it? Uh, Half past nine in the morning and we're on the, the Rattler uh, it's already. It's the 6% Rattler, it's not the, uh, the cheaper <laughs> one. So anyway, Dean, so before we actually get onto the, uh, the camper van market itself, you've obviously got a long history of camper vans. Yeah, first of all, Where yeah. did it all begin? Yeah, morning, Steve. So, um, yeah, I, I started uh, getting into the camper scene absolutely years ago. I think we met probably in the early 2000s, didn't we? Yeah. And um, trying to think what you had. Pretty Eyes. Pretty Eyes. Pretty yeah, Eyes. The Beetle. Yes. Pretty Eyes. That was, your, um, that was your Beetle. What year was it? I had two, didn't I? One was 70 and one was 67. Was, was it? it? Something like yeah, that. yeah, I remember Pretty Eyes. We called it Pretty Eyes because we were just taking the mick out of you, weren't we? Because we had all our boy racer cars <laughs> yeah, and you turned yeah. up in the Beetle and we went, oh, it's got really pretty eyes, Steve, hasn't it? With their, with their big headlights, didn't we? Um, started, I suppose, the kind of seed was probably sown then, wasn't it? And then uh, I went off to, to start a career with Volkswagen, the, the cars, and um, travelled around Europe, done a lot of stuff. Uh, with Volkswagen, managed to. I was really fortunate. Went to Wolfsburg, went to the factory, really got into sort of the technical side of things, how they're built, how they're constructed, why they. Uh, when people say, "All right, the doors don't shut like a Volkswagen," learning yeah. about why that why that happens. Really caught the bug for it from there, and so you did the, the, the bug, bug for the it. The bug. Ah. Uh, what else did we? And then yeah, that that was probably it for me. I was I was kind of sold then on on Volkswagen's ethos, what they stood for, what they were trying to produce. Um, the car for the people was probably the, yeah. the same, same old saying, wasn't it? Um, and that's, that's where it really started, Steve, I reckon. And then it's just grown into the, the transporter world. I've obviously had the Splitty, which we've done the video on, uh, various Volkswagen, Audi group type vehicles amongst us, but, but mainly the, the passenger vans. So have you got a favourite over the years? Oh, blimey. What, favourite car? Favourite van? Favourite Volkswagen. Oh, blimey. Uh... I, I keep heading back towards the combis and the caravels. They're just so versatile. Yeah. Um, similar to, to the one that you've got and the one behind us here. You, you've got so much versatility. You can put a pop-top roof on it. Once the roof's on, you've still got the seats for the family in the back. Huge load cargo space. Tailgate open. Keeps us nice and dry on days like this. I know um, you wouldn't believe the school holidays are about to start very, very soon, would you? It's, uh, it's chucking crazy. it down. It's been blooming lovely for the last few months. The day we want to do a video. Holidays. Holidays are starting and it's just chucking it down. Grim. Not, not ideal. So, yeah, that's, that's probably mine. That's probably mine. I'll, I'll go with a, a, a combi van and I'll push to a caravel because a caravel gives you the same options, but you wouldn't really pop top a caravel and turn it into a camper van because it's, it's designed to be the, the family car. They're two completely it? different sort of yeah. vehicles. Isn't it? So, and that's yeah. a bit like obviously the, the future of the, the transporter, which has not yet been announced, although I yeah. have heard recently that there is some news on that. We'll talk yeah, about yeah, that yeah. off camera. Um, but you've obviously got the multivan, which they have called the T7. Yeah. And that has been announced. That is this new iteration. But Absolutely. the new transporter with Ford, um, which will give you a bit of a hint, it is being brought forward from where it was meant to be. So the news is coming very soon on that. Correct. Um, but it, it, it's just, they are two different vehicles, they serve two different purposes, Yeah. but they still both hold the value you know, oh, extremely well, the incredibly, extremely sought after. Incredibly As well. far as business is concerned, what, mm. what is it you find people are 
kind of coming after the most? What are they mostly interested in? Uh, I think people are becoming a little bit wiser to, to the market at the moment. So there's still people doing these big conversions, charging 60, 70,000 pounds for camper vans. Um, I think people are becoming a little bit more wise to that and realizing that there are huge markups. Um, and don't get me wrong, some, some camper conversion companies are are doing very, very well. They're not ripping off their customers. They're giving, giving the customers the best advice. And there's a couple locally that we'll probably talk about in another video um, who, who do that. But um, the market itself is, is good. People are generally looking towards combi drive vans. They, they've realized that converting a panel van um, probably doesn't give you the same benefits as no. something which was a which was a combi things like speed limit restrictions people keep forgetting and going by a wayside and getting caught up in the moment with we have bought a panel van we've converted it into a camper van they're driving up the motorway at 70 and they get a speeding ticket yeah and i mean a lot of people are getting away with those now because there is the, the criteria which is gray which we're not going to get into today but some are not some are just paying them because they're not aware of of what the rules and the, the, the rules regulations are. are yeah absolutely. but something else with the combis and i know you've got a bugbear about it as yeah. well dodgy dodgy windows dodgy windows i call them dodgy windows it's more not. it's more of the i mean it's not so much dodgy windows don't no. get us wrong the, the windows are absolutely fine yeah but it's the companies who are selling them panel it's a it's a combi van well no Correct. it isn't it's a panel van which you've converted into yeah. a combi van yeah it's a panel van it's not a combi they are two different vehicles yeah so, so there's a lot of safety different aspects when they come out of factory which are different with a combi yeah than they are with a panel van and people don't understand that yeah converted correct. combi is not the same as a combi and that's that's probably one of our biggest inquiries that that we get here is people saying i've, I've just seen this combi could you help us out with it could you give us some advice and tell us what your thoughts are and the first thing i look at i look at the side windows and go they're not completely flush volkswagen windows they're slightly inset so they've been either replaced or that van started its life as a panel van and someone's chucked some seats in and put some windows in the side so it's something to look out for it doesn't it's not a problem you know there are companies again we'll talk about that that will do a, com a combi conversion put the seats in put all the strengthening in the floor whatever side windows go in that's that doesn't matter uh but it's it can't be sold and you can't pay combi money for it no you can't you can't advertise that van as a combi and pay combi money for it so people are inquiring with us and sending us inquiries saying can you check this out and straight away i can tell that that's not a combi van but you're paying the money as if it came from the factory line. and this is kind of one of my bugbears and why one of the reasons i talk about it so much on the channel it is irritating to me when i see these advertisements and you're yeah. like that's far too much money for that van but yeah. you know full well that somebody isn't going to understand no. what they're going to be paying for. No. I mean, I actually saw an advertisement yesterday, um, and it was a van, and it was something like fifty-five thousand mm. pounds for a, a camper van conversion, yeah. um, which was a two thousand and nineteen plate. And you're like, how much? Yeah. And you're you're actually genuinely saying it. It was a it was a lady in, I'd say probably mid fifties or something mm. like that. And the reason that she's selling it for that kind of money is because she's been well overcharged in the first place, the first place. by going to one of these Correct. mass manufactured yeah. um, It's not hard to work companies. out. No. Go and look at the retail price of a panel van and then go to a reputable conversion company. And, and again, another video, another time, but we can talk about companies that have got really good reputations, really pride themselves on what they do, get a, get a, a price from them and put the two prices together. Yeah. and work out that that probably comes to 50, 55 grand. So when you see a similar van for 65, you know, you know that there's some profit in there. And of course, businesses have to make money and we can't forget that. Um, it doesn't, it, it, times are tough for, for, the, for the public, but the businesses themselves, the overheads are huge. You know, running these workshops to do these conversions, heating the buildings, insuring the buildings, insuring the vehicles, insuring the workmen that are doing the it work. It doesn't come cheap. It doesn't, it doesn't come cheap. So when you see something for £60,000, you think, oh, what a rip off. They've still had to put the infrastructure in to, to, to have that. But again, there are still some that are probably taking the mick, yeah. taking the mick. And, and that's where a lot of our inquiry is coming from at the moment around just help me. Just yeah. genuinely helped me. So what are you finding with the market at the minute? Because obviously we've had this big, yeah. big boom. Obviously, VW Transporters, we know they hold the value really yeah. well. They've got a good reputation. They're always, always going to sell well. Um, prices have been through the roof, not only for the VWs, but obviously for the Ford Transit Customs and any other van. Even mm. the, the Mercedes, I mean, I think it's the Mercedes V-Class, was the highest... Was it appreciating vehicle value? It's just completely crazy. Yeah. But... 
what what's the market doing at the minute are they still holding the values yeah or? money's money and value is, is still really really good really strong we came through lockdown and and prices just went absolutely through the roof with the whole staycation thing um that that bubble lasted an extremely long time prices remain really high what then happened is uh, without going too much in the technical side of it, but Volkswagen, the delay on vehicles and vans coming from factory for, for let's say, the business customer who will renew their lease every three years, those vans were the second-hand market. Now, they aren't coming through as much because the lead time uh, from Germany is, is over a year. Some people are waiting 18 months, nearly two years for things like factory combi sport lines they're, they're extremely long uh, and it's not the van itself it's some of the parts so I think some of the things that are going on in the world are having a knock-on effect and it could be as simple as one optional extra can delay your van from 12 months to two years and that could be things like power latch tailgate yeah the parts to do that will delay your van by a year so it's it's not Volkswagen's fault so so how that's replicated into values is that the, the staycation bubble has kind of gone. We're, we're over that stage. Now what we're into is demand. The demand is still there for the vans, but we don't have the supply. Yeah. So finding the van, people are keeping hold of them. People are realizing if I sell my combi, what am I going to get to replace it? And once you've done this van life, you realize that you can make them drive like a, like a car with the, the right wheel and suspension set up. So they're holding on to them. And if they're holding on to them, the, the, the second-hand market is remaining really high because we can't get the vehicles. So again, it's another inquiry thing. People are sort of on our waiting list at the moment saying, next time you get a nice, genuine factory combi that hasn't been messed around with and, and tinkered around yeah. with, we'll, we're, we're interested. So in terms of the market, I think we've taken about a 5% decrease, 5 to 10%, depending on the van, decrease. The, the bubble is coming down but the prices remain high. So they're still a really good investment. And, uh, and I'm not saying that from, because this is our business, because it's all relative. If they're cheaper to buy, they're cheaper to pass on to the customer. But um, yeah, the, the prices are holding their money. The desirability of them is just through the roof, absolutely through the roof. And that's my take on it at the moment, the current climate. Do you think the last of the production line 6.1s are gonna hold the value? It's just a personal question, not gonna hold you to it. I. I'll give you my idea. I mean, I think they are. Yeah. I personally think that the last off the production line, yeah. six point ones, yeah, are potentially going to be the ones which will hold the value. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying I'm going to buy one and wrap it up in cotton wool because mm. I'd love to buy one and just drive it. Never yeah. mind, I've not got the money to wrap one up in cotton wool. Yeah. But I do think they are going to hold the value because it's going to be the last of the Volkswagen, as opposed to the Volkswagen Transit. I think we've we've I think Ford, we've we've Transit. said that all the way along though, haven't we? Yeah. We said that when the T4 ended. Yeah, but it's different though now, isn't it? Because it's the T4 still became the T5, and I know mm. people didn't like the T5 when it came out, but it it was still Volkswagen. This isn't Volkswagen. This is yep. this is the Ford, and a lot of people are concerned about this wet belt engine. And mm. you know, I know people have got their issues on that. Yeah. And what's what is it going to be like? How much Ford is it going to be, and how much Volkswagen is it going to be? Yeah. It's not going to be too long before we find out. It's but not. I I don't think that there's going to be quite. There's the a same. positive to that. In my, and this is my personal opinion on it, is that people that drive the Ford Transit will say, I appreciate Volkswagen and what they do, and I, I appreciate that the desirability of a, a transporter is high. Have you driven a Transit Custom, for example, a Tornio? And they drive superb. Yeah, the build do. quality is very good for a van, for a commercial vehicle, or a car drive van. If Ford are going into partnership and working, their technicians are working together, and the design teams are working together to, to combine that to make the transporter more drivable. I can only see it as positive. It's still, Volkswagen will still have overview. You're still driving a Volkswagen, but what brand doesn't share parts? Yeah. No, well, that's, you know, it's obviously very true. There's a lot of companies yeah. who've been doing it for. Yeah. For you people, Porsche drivers, for Nissan example. Nissan and Renault, I mean, yeah. two which you wouldn't have imagined put together. To put together. Drive a but Porsche McCann, open years. the bonnet and everything underneath is Volkswagen Audi parts, yeah. even to the point where you see the badges. So I, yeah. I wouldn't get caught up on it, and I, but I think it's a very good topic mm. of debate, really good, and I can't wait to see what Volkswagen pull out the bag. Yeah. I think they'll do it. I think Volkswagen will create the image, Ford will come with their design, and the d two design teams will just create a really nice vehicle to drive, and that's all it's about. And when we talk about wet belt, and those of you that don't know wet belt, it's, it's around the, um, the cam belt. So those of you that know a cam belt, um, it's, it's encased within oil to keep it lubricated. And, but like with anything, 
those that you that are in the, the Volkswagen kind of world, we all know about when was the cam belt changed? What's this EGR valve thing people yeah. are telling me about? Okay, so with the Ford engine, people say, what's the wet belt? When was the wet belt done? Or what's this thing I've heard about a wet belt? Every car you buy, it's the same. And the, the modern engines, they're not like it was 20 years ago no. when, you know, when we first met when we were driving around in yeah. what we drove then. Cars are completely different now. That's right. I mean, it seemed 20 years ago, we were always on somebody's drive trying to fix something or other. Correct. Yeah. Um, By a warranty. Not quite the same now. Yeah. <laughs> That's the answer. Yeah. Volkswagen have ticked that box and they're doing a, it's not a plug. It's not a plug, those of you. Um, Volkswagen are doing a really good offer on war extended warranties at the moment. Two, yeah. year, two year warranty with two year roadside assistance and, and breakdown, you know, the breakdown cover and a service plan included. Yeah, it's, they, they are a complete no brainer. I mean, it's just a no, it's just a no brainer. So a van, a car is going to go wrong. Yeah. So if you're worried about that, buy the vehicle you want, enjoy the vehicle you want, get yourself an extended warranty and you've got peace of mind. Yeah. That's my that's my take. And they're not an awful lot of money. I think around eight to nine hundred pounds. Either way, it's ridiculously cheap. Yeah. Six to nine hundred quid for a complete peace of mind for two years, including servicing which two services. Which is gonna cost you that much Four, anyway. Four or five hundred pounds. And you're spreading the cost because you can spread the cost. Spread the cost yeah. monthly. Yeah. I think it, I can't remember, twenty nine pounds a month or something like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Not something which that wasn't I a can plug. get with a well, it's not something I can get with my old van anyway, but one day, maybe, I can... Yeah, uh, yeah absolutely. You know what? I was thinking about actually getting a T4. I don't know why. Hey. I don't, yeah, I know, that's We've complete, been there, we've done that. that. That's completely <laughs> bonkers. I've just we've completely thrown that one out there. Yeah. But, no, I just saw a, a T4 and I thought, mm, you know what, actually... No, we no digress. I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not doing it. Let's, <laughs> we let's, digress. Let's not that's there. another video. That's another story. And another video yeah. is um, ID Buzz, which we're not going to talk about today. Yeah. Um, but we will talk about that yeah. in a couple of months' time because I do believe that you're driving one in a couple I'll of months' time. I'll have an ID time, buzz. And yeah. you haven't had one. Mm -hmm. um, so it'd be good to get your take, yeah, my take on, on what it. that is. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. But I have seen an ID buzz camper van. And I'm actually, I can't actually talk about that. No, no. I'll, get, I'll get shot to pieces for yeah. that. So yeah, I'll yeah, tell yeah. you about that off camera. Um, <laughs> yeah, not, not quite the same. Anyway. So what we've said about my fire pit conversations and if it wasn't raining, what I need is I need actually a proper fire pit rather than the cheap 16 quid Amazon fire pit which I've got, which is no good in this weather. Um, product of the week. What oh. is your gadget? What is your favourite? I know you've hit it round there. I have hit it round the corner. What is it and why? Okay, so you, you mentioned this to me. Go and get it, go and get it. Go and get it, go and get it. <sighs> So here we go. Pop it out there. So, um, I was after the solution for power in vans. And I'm always in and out of different vans, different vehicles. And I don't, um, oh, what's the best way to word it? I wanted something that I could just throw into any vehicle I was going in, car or van, have 240 volt hookup, 12 volt hookup, charge my phone, charge my cool box, everything without any worries. And then with something that could charge it, that I could, that I could get recharged on the move. So I've done a load of research into to these portable power stations. Now there's absolutely loads on the market, loads and loads and loads on the market. Um, different sizes, different power outputs. So I went one with, a, I say middle of the road, it's probably top-ish top end of the market, I would say, would you agree? Um, well, I mean, the brand, um, just for, if you can't see it, it's Power Oak, um, and Power Oak, it's Power Oak Bluetti, and I think Power Oak is the holding company of Correct, Bluetti. Correct, of Bluetti. Um, so, just before you can, I mean, cool. my opinion on these, and I, I have briefly mentioned on the channel before, I've always been of the opinion that if you get a very good leisure battery yeah. and an inverter, then that's in your van, and that, that's all you need. Yeah. And you, you don't need anything else. Correct. So um, I so I took a twist so you on convince that. Me. You convince me. I'll convince me you. So this is what I this is what I found, and this is from sort of feedback from my customers and from what what I've found from going away and using vans myself, is when you've got your awning set up or your tent set up or your kids are out in the tent and you're using the van or vice versa, you haven't got power in your tent. You haven't got power in your in your awning because your power socket is in the back of your van. You then find that plugging something in will flatten your leisure battery and then you don't have the leisure battery for use of other things such as 
your lights, your LED lights in your roof and all of that kind of stuff that you want to have in your van. So having something like this on the side, you can pick it up, it's fairly lightweight. It's obviously got a huge battery inside, but you can then get a solar panel a portable solar panel which folds up to sort of that sort of size chuck it out on your grass when you're camping stick it in and it's charging whilst you're using it or you can leave it out there and get the thing charged up all day it also runs off your cigarette lighter to charge it so you can charge yeah. it up on the move in addition you can then run depending on the size you want you can run things um off it like um other brands are available but henry hoover yeah so if you're out cleaning your car and you can't run an extension Henry lead, vacuum cleaner. Vacuum cleaner. Yeah, corrected. Um, you can put this out, plug your Henry in and hoover your van. You don't need to worry about running extension cables all the way out along your driveway. You can run it off this. You can charge things like household items like uh, those battery cordless Dysons. I don't know why I'm talking about vacuum cleaners now. But your, your Dyson, you can charge it off this from start to finish. All your mobile phones, your iPads, your laptops will all charge and run off this. Um, they come now with all different options of uh, power supplies on the front. So you've got your normal 12 volt, you've got your USC for the modern iPhones and then your standard USBs. I just think they're just an all round yeah. An all-round good egg that's absolutely portable. You can lend it to your mate. You, if you're camping with friends and you've got power in yours and they haven't, you can go, no worries, take, take this. And they've got, they've got hookup. Um, for the ladies out there, you can charge things like the Dyson, um, the battery Dyson straighteners. They will fully charge off this. So you're not arguing with yeah. your other half saying you're running the leisure battery down while we're parked up. Charge it off that. Stick it out in the sun. It's completely off grid. It also then caters for camping. Because you can't do that when you're off grid camping, no, can true. you? So, Bell Tent Hire companies and things like that. Yeah, but you've got a van, you're not going to be camping. You're not going to be camping if you've got no, a van. You're not going to be camping, no. you're going to be using the yeah. luxury of the van. But, but there you go. That, so, that's, that's why I've got one. <laughs> I use it at home. It's not a plug. It definitely isn't a plug. It's just me. Um, I, use you, I mean, they are becoming more and more popular. But, like Correct. I say, I mean, I've got a decent electrical setup yeah. in my van, yeah. albeit the inverter, because I mean, don't get me started on inverters. Mine's only an 800 watt inverter. Yeah, um, yeah, you can get two, 3,000 watt inverters, which mm -hmm. are cheap and cheerful, but uh, I've gone for the Victron one, as you know, mm -hmm. um, and I like it, but it doesn't power as much as some of these ones. I mean, this is only a 1,000 watt one. Um, I think if I was to go for one, it'd probably be because I wanted to run my coffee machine. Yeah. If I want to run a coffee machine from my van, yeah. then I am going to need a much bigger inverter. My 800 watt mm -hmm. inverter doesn't do it. Mm -hmm. Did, have you used it inside your house at all? It will power my TV, my home TV. Really, um, really low power. It's actually quite good. It will run my TV for around three to four hours, okay. my house TV. Um, and the only reason I know that was because of a uh, power cut. I had a power cut. And I went, OK, what can we do? Um, we plugged a little light into it, the, a desktop light, and put the TV on. So that was the children sorted and we had light. <laughs> and, it, and it was three hours it lasted until it went flat from start to finish, which I thought was quite good for a TV. And it's effectively free. free. I know you've obviously had free. to buy the unit itself, yeah. but it's free electricity because Absolutely. you obviously charge it with solar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything charges off it, phones, the whole lot. Wireless charging on Wireless top Wireless charging well. on top, yeah. Yeah, and so many devices, especially if you're running 12 volt. And this isn't a current unit, is it? Well, oh, it's EB70, I've just seen on the back. I think it actually might be a current unit, but it's slightly different branding now. It might look a little bit different now, but you've, you've obviously had this for a few years. Two years. Two years. And it's still going strong. Nothing, still nothing's using changed. It yeah, yeah, nothing's changed. Yeah, it's not losing power any quicker. It's doing really, really well. Um, it's, it, they're expensive. I think I, st I think the prices will come down. They sh they need to come down. They, I, I do keep a, a good eye on price and stuff, and they, yeah. they have started to come down. Yeah. Technology's got less. Yeah. I mean, just lithium lithium ion batteries for yeah lithium ion phosphate batteries don't get the two technologies mixed up. Lithium ion phosphate and lithium ion are two completely different technologies. Um, the lithium ion phosphate batteries have come down yeah. um, quite considerably. Yeah. Um, they are becoming more and more affordable and more people are looking yeah. at them now. So, yeah, I think I think it's good for those that are new to this world. Um, if you don't want to spend huge amounts of money converting your van, you can take this. If you're not sure that camping is going to be for you, you can get one of these. 
because then you can just take it out and take it with yeah. you. You're not investing over a thousand pounds into your vehicle. You've, you've got a thousand pounds in a box, which you can take yeah. anywhere with you. Yeah. Lend it to your friends, family, whatever you want to do. Um, it's great for barbecues and stuff, powering radios and things like that, yeah. and, and, and stereos and things. It's, it's absolutely, absolutely brilliant. And it runs things like cool boxes, these 12 volt cool boxes. Yep. Um, you power them when you're going on holiday, but when you get there, it's always plugged in. We'll run it off that and you're not running down your battery in your van. Keep your cool box charged up. Cool box might be quite useful for my uh, my bottles and things going forward. Yeah, we haven't even um, got started on the we, bottles we yet. We haven't got started, no. We'll open one up um, in a minute. Although I do fancy, I do fancy Yeti, a Yeti cool box. Yeti, if you're watching. I'm quite happy with my, my 30 quid Tesco one at the yeah, moment. Yeah, nice. That it ice, just shows. That ice is in there and it's actually open now. Oh, I, mean, I know that. it's not the warmest day. I mean... We are in July, but you wouldn't realise we're in July with the, the way the uh, temperature is. But this ice is in cool. for a few hours. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's good, and it's just starting to rain a little bit harder now. Ah. Oh. Any regrets? Any regret purchases which you've, you've made over the years? I regret very early doors. Uh, it's a bit vague, this one, but this is, probably, this is probably my big one for me. The buy cheap, buy twice thing. Yeah. Don't don't buy cheap. You will buy twice. I yeah. just it's so. What are you trying to say about my cool it's box? It's so cheesy. That, yeah, but the thing is about the cool box, <laughs> you chuck dice in it. Um, I just anything with these vehicles, wheels, suspension setup, uh, carpet lining, cheap carpet. It's not going to go well. Cheap insulation, no good. Uh, cheap Chinese wheels. Well, we kind of know that. I mean, if anybody's been following this channel for a quite a while, you know that I bought this van. Um, and it needed some stuff done yeah. for the previous person converting conversion company. Correct. Yeah. I'd done it cheap and it wasn't great. Just needs redoing. It completely needed redoing. Yeah, and, and some of these um wire some of the wiring videos in the previous videos on yeah. the wiring. Just there's some cheap. Yeah, cheap, 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 cheap. I'm seeing quite a few at the moment actually as I'm going round um having a look at vans and things and yeah. there's some absolute horror stories yeah. uh, out there with some of these. Yeah. Yeah, that buy cheap, buy twice. And it, I think it also goes with vans as well. When people are sort of, they set themselves a budget. Don't buy a cheap base van and then think we'll spend money on it yeah. because it's still a cheap base van. We get, we get caught up as, as the consumer on what it looks like. Wow, it's got beautiful wheels on it. It's a lovely colour. It's got blue on the bottom, white on the top. It's a transporter and it's got a camper interior and a pop top. And that to 50% is fine. Yeah. Um, some of you will look out there and go, okay, so what what quality stuff have you used? But would you know that? I, I just don't think you will. And I think no, it's so the important. One's the step, isn't it? You know, you've got the side step. Well, actually, some companies, when they're putting in the floor and all that, they need to actually change out that side step. Well, some companies don't bother changing Box that off. side step. They'll just like drill some screws in it. And it's like, what are you doing? You're mm. paying like 70 yeah. odd grand for this conversion company to do your exactly. van. And then you've got screws in the step because they can't be bothered to actually replace the yeah. step for the correct step. And some of them, they don't even bother putting insulation in. No. And it's just like, It's why? a really tough why? place. And it's not a case of, okay, that, well, that's a bad van. It's just a case of, well, actually, people need to know actually, well, the difference between yeah. this 70,000 pound van and this 70,000 pound van is this one's got these materials in it and this one's produced this way and yeah. it's done this. Or it started his life as a combi. And this it's, one's done this. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a minefield. Mm. I can see why more and more are coming, especially to us at the moment, the inquiry and, and almost we've almost changing tax slightly and becoming a little bit of an advisory service and trying to just help people. And I know that you're upsetting people as well at the moment because people are coming yeah. to you saying, I want 60 grand for my van and you're saying, mm, well, it's, it's not. a 30 grand van at best. And yeah, and we're, and we're still, yeah, we're, we're setting people in a nice way. Um, but, but the problem is that they've not seen the problems to start with because they weren't, yeah. well, they weren't yeah, aware and when, of Yeah, and when you point them out, and actually we do do it in the right way, when, when people are coming to look to sell their vans or help us to sell their vans for them or offer advice on pricing, which we do 50% of our time is, is doing a lot of that. Um, it's a very hard pill to swallow when you tell somebody yeah. that their pride and joy isn't quite the pride and joy that they thought they bought because we point out the issues. But that, on the flip side, means that they are coming to us next time and saying, OK, I've, this is what I found. What should I do? So, yeah, it's a, it's a yeah. difficult one. It's a difficult one, but we don't we're not struggling with that. We're, we're definitely helping put, point people in the right direction. And even if that sometimes means things, for example, um, 
your diesel night heater that you think is a really good diesel night heater is actually a cheap Chinese copy that has been mounted underneath your van. You've bought this van as a, as a fully equipped, and it is fully equipped, but you've paid Wabasto money for a Chinese yeah. copy. Um, that's fine. We will organise, we'll rip it out, we'll put a bill with Basto in it and you can charge the, the retail money. Yeah. So things, everything's doable. Everything's doable, but you just have to come to us and we'll talk yeah. about it first. So, yeah. Yeah, interesting times. Very interesting times. Mm. There we go. Well, I do, I might have a regret myself. I've not really got a regret at the moment, but I might regret. I was shopping in paint the other week. <laughs> that's, you, you, that want see this, you want to see this? That's not the regret, oh. shopping in Paynton. <laughs> Oh no, that's not a regret. You can't regret that. Look at that. You can't regret that. I, I couldn't resist it. It's a VW official oh, licensed seven. product skateboard. Wow. Not for you didn't buy it from Volkswagen then. No, I bought it from from a shop. The shop on uh, a shop. Torbay Road. <laughs> on a road. On in Torbay a town. Road. Look at that. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah. Mountain I've never skateboarded your van. in my life. That's super cool. Do you know what? I might actually try and learn skateboard and that's probably why I'm going to regret it because I, I might break my body. It's got a split on it. Amazing. How cool is that? Fantastic. So, yeah, it, that might be a regret. Anyway, that's not a regret. I don't regret that. I might go and get one. Anyway, I might have to try and uh, learn to ride this or just kind of mount it in my van. But Steve, I've opened one of these and have you seen this with these bottles now? I know, it's ridiculous. Stop you losing it? the bottle and then it, uh, the lid. Uh, it's not very good, is it? It's very annoying. It tickles my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Just be glad I'm not on the Rattler already, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so next week, hopefully I'm going to be bringing you a video on festivals and campouts and convoys and things like that. And why do people do it? Why do people take part in the Volkswagen events? So if you want to see that, do stay tuned, take care, and I hope to see you soon. See you next time.